Welcome to The Advocate, where thought-provoking topics are discussed with no holds barred here on PLOS TV Africa. We basically call a spade by its name. Today, I'm pointing out the snake and ladder effect in our political system. Ife Dolako is asking what influences most of our societal ills. Victor is also asking what exactly happens with some of the issues that plague the society and country at large. Elijah wraps it up with a discourse on making the nation work by living in the moment. Sit back and after the break, we'll be here to dissect it all. Stay with us. Snakes and ladders. This was a board game common in homes if you grew up in the 80s or in the 90s. Yeah, you could call those old school. It involved a dice and a board where moves could either lift you up the board or after rolling the dice or from the number on the dice could be your downfall on the board. Today, this will be the basic analogy in which I would like to discuss the political snakes and ladders in Nigeria. The tragedy of elected power without leadership and then the Stephen Wonder effect on the rights of citizens based on political leanings. First, Leadership is defined as servitude with a person's name attached with a title. In our dear country, we have translated leadership to otherwise mean Nazi domination on people you represent. It's no amazement that we reside in an animal farm reminiscent of George Orwell's book. Just this time, rabies has been infused within the ruling class. The absolute disdain for human rights is unrivaled in the country from the lucky situation during the NSARS to the CP that wants to party incident in Magodo. It's quite clear that military rule still lives in our hearts in a democracy, while we trample on the rights of citizens and call it the protection of a nation's sovereignty. Really funny. As the usual escape of leadership, whom create mock judicial panels and committees where government is defendant, jury, and witness in a case. Till the police is out of the Ministry of Interior and under the Ministry of Justice, and the Attorney General no longer serves at the pleasure of the President and appointed by the President, and, and the appointment is changed to a Council of Supreme Judges who now appoint the Attorney General, we will never be free. A wise scholar once said in the 16th century, and I adapted it presently for Nigeria. Play me the tunes of a civilization and I will dictate their minds. So what are the tunes of our civilization presently? We'll look at them as basically social media and the media. The amazing predictability of people's reaction to events based on political leanings is so appalling in this country that when a post is made on social media, it's simple to predict where your friend will sway towards even during physical conversations. We are like zombies. The great fella, of course, was very, very spot on on that. And don't rationally access anything from an individual, individual thought process and just make our choices based on what we support. I guess this is why we don't love a country, but love our wallets. Our daddy and mommy SOs, of course, those are social media mommies and daddies on social media with multiple following or political parties dictate how exactly we lean towards points, agendas, and directions. It's not uncommon to see aspirants and candidates who have never read the Constitution and call themselves a new breed. To me, they remind me of the old politician in Kano who was once asked of minerals in Kano State, and he mentioned Fanta, Coke, and Sprite. Let's not forget the amazing, brilliant activists who have totally no understanding of the political space, who haven't been in a political party and still say political parties have no ideology. Really funny. Matter of fact, political parties actually do have an ideology. But the truth is, whether the ideology is being followed is another pot of pomoy entirely. The Constitution, of course, seems flawed because its amendment rate is poor. You can imagine our brilliant 
ninth as national assembly that has trumped the lazy record of the entire lazy records of the legislative in nigeria by sitting only a 66 days out of the constitutionally mandated over 180 days i'm sure they will blame covid or something else or some people might even say it's bandits i'm sure we need to do better with 2023 around the corner we still remain entrenched in political illiteracy and the usual suspects Swaga and co. would of course capitalize on this. I don't look forward to a president that will speak of Agbadu, of course, pun not intended, or men in uniform acting like scavengers on the same citizens which they are constitu constitutionally sworn to protect. But worst of all are the citizens calling their states public spaces. Who did this to us? We can't keep blaming Lord Lugard. When it was 80 kobo to a dollar, he wasn't even mentioned all of a sudden. Every song by any daddy geo or someone in politics is Lord Dogard. Nigeria is the most populous black nation in the world. What we need to understand is that if we fail, the black race entirely fails. So, people. Hmm. A political philosopher. <laughs> I wouldn't call myself. Well, that. it's just that I'm, I'm yet to understand the version of your snake and ladder because the one I played was quite different from yours. I used the, uh, what's that uh, phone then? GSM, those old 1X, 1G GSM. Nokia yeah, 3310. Uh -huh. We used to play those, the snake eats and become longer. Anyway, I, I love your ideologies. Um, we just have to be responsible as Nigerians. We complain too much. Complain will not solve any problem. We have to be strategic. That's what I think. We have to be strategic. We know our challenges. What are we willing to do for our country? So it's a cultural thing, a cultural value system. We have to be strategic. We have to be responsible. We have to be intentional. And we should stop blaming what, hap what happened in the past. You mentioned uh, the issue of uh, colonial masters, Lord Lugard, and all these people. They were not meant to be. Why did they uh, agamate the northern and south? Forget what? Nigeria is not the only country that uh, Britain colonized. Americans fought for their independence. Many other countries in the world, and they're doing very well. So we have the potentials to do well, and I believe we should be responsible and be focused on that. Hmm. So. You know, um, one of my most um, very interesting um, personality, right, that's in my space, you know, one says that, you know, in a matter of few decades, and when I mean few decades, we're talking about less than three decades, right, we will see um, an ushering out of a certain group of people. I know you know what I'm talking about, you know. So um, life's um, process will take its course on them, right, you know. And I think that because if you're, if you're 30 now, in two decades you're 50. If you're 50 now, in two decades you're 70. If you're 70 now, I think Baba is about, you know, 70 something. 79. In two decades, I mean, he's already at the lounge of life trying to depart. All right. So whether you decide to relinquish power or not, life would naturally take its course. And rethinking all of all these, even with the NSAS, you know, protest and people lost their lives and all of that. I, I've come to realize that I think young people, we need to um start um fortifying ourselves internally all right because the truth is um i understand the place of taking power forcefully you know and all of those things and heads is going to roll you know you're going to shed blood and all those things but really i mean with the nsars movement you would see what happened with young people there's a bit of division even with the um, who started it who is leading it and all of that so so that we are not clamoring for power and when we get it we don't have a united front so i'm coming from a different angle which is 2023 is here you know how are we getting prepared for that what steps are we making how are we being intentional you know borrowing from elijah's words but i also think that beyond the whole external shout what are we doing as young people internally to be ready you know to seize power when it comes and i'll end with this you know the worst thing is for success to meet you or opportunity rather to meet you unprepared so we've got to prepare for it and then take the power when it comes and use it appropriately very important okay. yeah um 
the part where you said um, Nigeria is the most populous black race, mm, and if we fail, um, if the black, race, the black race, yes. race fails. Do you think like that our political leaders know this? Because I feel like they are very aware of this, and that's why they, that's why they are doing whatever they are doing because they know that this is the most populous ra um, black race. Like this is the giant of Africa. No matter how we are corrupted no matter how we mismanage everything it won't go down like i feel like they have that at the back of their mind like no matter how much we do it won't go down people won't let it go down other nations won't let it go down other countries won't let it go down nigeria um has more investment than any other black um um, nation in Africa. So it's like there are so many external factors that no matter what we do internally as political leaders, people outside will see we're putting in money because they don't want to see it go down. It can't go down. So I feel like they're using that knowledge as an advantage to keep mismanaging these funds, to keep being corrupt, to keep doing whatever they're doing because they know that. Because if Nigeria go and approach World Bank or approach is anybody um, outside, <clears throat> approaches the world leaders, they would, they would open doors to us, they would yell us, they would support us, they would mm. give their decision. So I feel like our political leaders are actually very smart and very wise knowing that no matter if you go there for 20 years, you to pack what you pack, it will still be there. It will never, it's endless. It will always be there. It's an ocean. Keep putting it. It will never. I feel like when they will start taking responsibility is when we have like a competing, if South Africa grows like 250 million people in South Africa, that's when they're like, oh, there's another populous nation now. There's another, and that one is doing much better because like Ghana, Ghana our neighbor, is doing very good economically, but the population is like, just Lagos State here. So we still have like our, what's it called? Um, this is in strength in number. And that's what the political leaders are actually using to their advantage to keep doing whatever they are doing. Well, well, well sorry to interject. Um, I'm going to respond to both of you. I beg to differ slightly from both of you. Okay. You have brilliant points, but slightly, I'm going to differ slightly. Let me start with you, uh, my boss lady. Uh, you said something about um, they are taking advantage because they feel that we have the strength in number and we are a great nation in number and people and all the resilience. But sorry to quote you, I hope the, this politician they know that um, it's not in any, nobody has a destiny to always be great all the time. You have to work it out. Mm -hmm. If Nigeria feels, I'm sorry to say, sir, the black nation will not feel. We have many other black nations that are doing well. We just have to keep being responsible to hold ourselves accountable. And then number two, the idea of we uh, complaining so much about this, oh, we don't have this, oh, Britain did this to us, this one, that one. Like somebody wrote a book, how Europe or Britain underdeveloped Africa. I don't Not know that you've, you've heard. So why don't we talk about how we ourselves underdeveloped ourselves? I think that's more important than that. Because political leadership is about human, protecting human rights. It's about empathy. It's about inclusion. It's about transparency in governance. It's, it's about fighting corruption. It's about development. It's very wide. So we just have to take responsibility. We should stop worrying about uh, being giant of Africa. What is the intent of even checking out? Have you seen what Rwanda is doing? <laughs> eh? So we cannot be claiming giant of Africa every time, every time. It's, we are, I'm happy oh, that we, oh yeah. we, we are giant of Africa. That's what our parents told us. But let's be very sincere. Mm. Does this really feel like giant of Africa with the kind of situation happening in the country? We have to be very responsible. Don't just claim it. And then secondly, Vic, uh, Victor, the strategies. I, I would I would like to say that we are not saying young people should just go with soft power and seize power. At least that's not our thought here. I believe that uh, the older generation should be willing to work with the younger generation to mentor us and learn from us. Learn, mm -hmm. We learn from them, they also learn from us, are we? And then we see how to meet a middle point to make the country work. 2023 is coming. We are not saying that the youth... Yes, we want you to be in government. We are not saying that the youth must go and seize power. No, the youth has to be properly mentored. By the right set of people well um if we continued on this topic would have of course gone on for a long time one key thing we need to understand is that good governance of course is a factor of it is not youth age or gender so if a dollar core is next after the break